not a that's not a bad total for the night. Fairly decent. Yeah. All right, both of these coaches already looking forward to week two. Here's Jimbo and Dabo on that game in Death Valley. I really was. We, there, I'm telling you, there was no Clemson looking at Clemson doing anything with Clemson. I, 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 that, that's a fact. That was, we've learned that we're not going to do that, and you know, uh, you, and you you don't want to get that ready for somebody that early anyway. You, you can be too ready too early, and uh, you got to learn to play the game in hand. And I thought they did that. We made a few mistakes, but. I love their energy. I love their focus. They like each other. And uh, so we're going to be a work in progress for a while. But, you know, quick turnaround and uh, going to be a big matchup in here next week. It's 1-0. Oh. That was our goal, win the opener, uh, start the season 1-0. Oh, and then we're on to next week. I mean, we've got a couple extra days to prepare for these guys. They played tonight, too, so they'll have the same. And uh, they're, they're a really good team, like you saw last year. And we're, we're going to be ready, though, come Saturday. There's that guy. It's, it's going to be a little bit different ball game now. They got some great receivers and Trevor, and I'm glad our guys got some confidence going in, but we're going to have to play one heck of a game. I mean, that's been a little bit different deal with, with Trevor and those guys throwing. But, you know, we played them last year. Hopefully we'll, we'll see how it goes. Dang near almost beat them last year. Remember looking at that game last year, 28-26 win by Clemson. Texas A&M outscored the Tigers 23-14 in that second half. Kellen Mond, what a day. He kind of broke out of that game. 430 yards, 333 of them in the second half. And remember... It wasn't Trevor Lawrence that was the starter. It was actually Kelly Bryant was the starter for that game. Maybe pretty much single-handedly won that game for the Tigers. <sighs> Another matchup, week two. First thoughts on that one. Well, the great thing is when you play in the SEC West, it's not like you're going to go into Death Valley and be rattled. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? When you yeah. play in the West, it's every week. So this is just another game. But what a and going to have to do is match the physicality of this Clemson football team starting in the run game. When you run for 411 yards like they did tonight, it wasn't against a, you know, non-Power 5 school. This was against Georgia Tech. It's hard to rush for 411 yards. Clemson's physical. They're fast. They will beat you down on the line of scrimmage. So run defense is going to be key. And good thing A&M's pass defense showed up tonight because yeah. they will have their hands full next week with a whole slate of those 6'3 and 6'4 receivers. But guess what, C.D.? at least they go against that every day in practice. No doubt about it. And that's exactly what gives Clemson secondary a hard time. You look at what Texas A&M did well against them last year. You saw those stats, 430 yards passing. What Jake Bentley did, what, similar, 500 over, yards, over 500 yeah. yards against them. Yeah. It's because the, the great receivers that they have and the poise of Kellen Mond. Kellen Mond not only is willing to stand in there and take shots, but he's got athleticism and elusiveness to get out of trouble and let those big guys find openings in the secondary. So I really believe that this is a matchup that plays to the strengths of the personnel that Texas A&M has. Mm -hmm. That group of wide, wide receivers is one of the Real best. Real quick, do you guys country. feel better about A&M's chances right here after that game tonight than you did, let's say, 48 hours I ago? do, I do, because of how sharp Kellamon seemed to be tonight, because of how well that offense moved when they were clicking, mm -hmm. because of those big guys on the outside. But to your point earlier, I want to see them protect a little bit better in the passing game than what they did tonight up front. I think there's two things. It's year two with Jimbo, and he's pounded in their mind the importance of physicality. And they're going to go back and revisit that game last year. They're going to look at the game film and say, guys, we were that close. If we do these three things mm -hmm. different, we can beat these guys and shock the world, and that will be a conversation. They needed to have somebody make big plays like Miles Jones did today for the Aggies. He had two interceptions, yeah. and he had some thoughts about that matchup against Clemson. Speaking of confidence, do y'all consider that a really good tune-up for Trevor Lawrence and Clemson upcoming next, the way y'all played in the secondary tonight? <laughs> We're going to start preparing tonight. Um, it reminds me of Quinn Williams. Remember last year he was talking about Kyler Murray, and he's like, well, I don't think Kyler Murray... And he's like, I'll just be quiet, right? Pump I mean, that was a little coaching, right? To, to, I think he kind of wanted to say something about this matchup. You like that attitude? I do. I mean, you know what? The guy's confident right now, and he just said, hey, less is more in this case. You right? know what he's it also was? Right. He's been told not to talk about Clemson oh, from course. this past week, and it probably yeah. didn't realize that now you're allowed to talk about Clemson. That Texas State game is over with. It's on to Death Valley. How about that, too? Also, Texas A&M holding Texas State to only eight yards rushing. Something to look at. And these, both of these teams have an extra two days to get ready yep. before next week's uh, games. Thanks.